Welcome to another Three Steps to Sketch video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a sign graph that has two kinds of shifts, both a phase shift and a vertical shift. And to do that, we're going to use our advanced method. So here's the equation we're going to look at. Y equals negative three sine of two X minus pi minus one. Now, before we dive into the method, I do want to take just a quick moment to factor out the term b here, which is the coefficient in front of x, just so we can clearly see our phase shift when we glance at our equation. So y equals negative 3 sine, all that stays the same, and we're going to factor out 2, so we're left with x minus pi over 2. And double check that you did your factoring correctly by just mentally distributing that 2 back through. So we see we'd have 2x minus, and then that'd be 2 pi over 2, which is pi. So that matches up. And then of course, we still have the minus 1. So it's nice to do this to clearly see the phase shift. The phase shift shows up in here with the x. Um, we know that it's going to be a phase shift of right pi over 2. And then we also can see the vertical shift. The minus one tells us we'll be moving down one. Um, I like doing this just so that when you glance at your equation, you aren't tempted to say that the phase shift is maybe pi, like if you were looking at the original equation. Um, if you know that you can be disciplined and find the phase shift by taking the C term and always dividing by B, that's completely fine too. Um, but I do like to write out the equation uh, with the B term factored out. All right, so we can move into our method now. All right, here's our outline. And here is our equation with that B term factored out. So note that our equation is in that general form. Let's remind ourselves it's Y equals A sine of, and I'll do it with B factored out, it's B minus excuse me, b times x minus c over b, and then plus d. Okay, so that would be bx minus c, but we're showing it in the factored out form, so it matches the equation we're working from. All right, so now that we have this, we can work to organize all our information um, so that we can get started on a nice graph. Step one is to find the essentials, and we'll work first on the base graph and labeling our axes, which we'll use in step two. Okay, so a is the coefficient in front of sine. So in this case, a is negative three. All right, so if you take the absolute value of a, that tells you the amplitude of your graph, which is the distance from midline to maximum or from midline to minimum. Okay, and it also shows you, it, if you think about it in terms of just basic function transformations, we know that's a vertical stretch by a factor of three. So it will appear vertically stretched out compared to the graph y equals sine. Um, one other huge thing is that negative out front. I like to put myself a star or circle or highlight or something that's going to flag my attention back to that when I start graphing the base pattern because we know the negative signifies that we've had a vertical reflection, which means that our base graph has reflected over the x-axis. Um, so we'll talk more about that later, but it's nice to make a note of that right now. All right, so then b, we see b here, it's the coefficient of x, b is two. So we know a couple things from this. First, we know that two cycles of our graph should happen between zero and two pi. And we also can use that to find the period. So we calculate the period of sine, um, taking two pi and dividing by b. So two pi divided by two, our period here is going to be pi. And remember, that's just the length of a horizontal cycle. And so it makes sense that if one cycle takes pi, we can say that two cycles happen between zero and two pi. All right, so it's just, again, deepening our understanding of B. All right, so now we're going to choose how we label our tick marks. And we're very particular about this for our horizontal axis. We like to take the period and divide by four. So pi divided by four is how we'll label um, or how we'll count for our horizontal tick marks. And we do this so that when we plot our base pattern in the next step, each key point will align nicely with our horizontal tick marks. Um, of course, we're going to shift 
um, but it's nice to have that base pattern aligning with our horizontal tick marks. All right, and then for our vertical axis, kind of with ones is usually just the simplest way to go. Um, and I like that because you can compare and see the difference if you're graphing multiple um, graphs that have different amplitudes or different vertical stretch factors. So let's go ahead and label our axes before we go any further. So we'll start with the horizontal axis. We're counting by one pi over four. So one pi over four, two pi over four reduces to pi over two, three pi over four, four pi over four, which reduces to pi. All right, this is our fourth horizontal tick mark check. This should match the period. It does, so we're on the right track. Let's keep counting. We're at five pi over four, six pi over four, which reduces to three pi over two, 7 pi over 4, and 8 pi over 4, which reduces to 2 pi. So I'm going to go ahead and label the negative side of the axis. It'll be all the same values, just with negative signs. So if you're following along, you might want to pause um, and get your axis labeled fully while I do mine. All right, so this is the horizontal axis labeled. And now let's label the vertical axis, just counting by ones, easy enough. Up to 5 and down to negative five. All right, so before we get graphing, we should go ahead and identify our shifts. And this is nice and easy because we have already factored out the B term from our equation. So we see here, X minus pi over two, our C over B term or our phase shift term is just pi over two, which means we'll be moving right by pi over two units. Okay, and then our D is negative one, which means that we'll be shifting vertically down one unit to get our final graph. All right, so we have organized and analyzed. We have everything set up to make our actual graphing really, really nice and easy. So let's go on to step two, where we'll plot our base pattern. So a couple things here. First, remember when you plot the base pattern using this method, you should do it lightly or in a color that's different from your final graph. So I'm going to use light blue here. Um, this is just a temporary graph that we'll actually work to shift from to get to our final graph. I also am noticing this star. Okay, remember that is how we are reminding ourselves that our graph is actually a reflected graph. It had a vertical reflection or a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so instead of following the base pattern of the parent graph, y equals sine x, which is just zero maximum, zero minimum, it'll be the flip of that. It'll be zero minimum, zero maximum. So that will take care of the reflection. All right, so again, lightly or in a different color, we'll start by plotting our first point, our first zero on the origin. Okay, and then we'll do our minimum, remember we flipped. So that'll happen at our first horizontal tick mark, which is pi over four. And look to A to guide you for the Y coordinate. So A is negative three, that means our Y coordinate for our minimum is negative three. All right, we'll have another zero. That'll happen at the second horizontal tick mark. And then our final point in the pattern will happen at the third horizontal tick mark, so three pi over four. And its Y coordinate will have the opposite value of A. It'll be our maximum. Okay, and I like to close off the graph with the start of the next cycle. It'll be another zero happening at pi. Um, that'll just make it a little bit nicer as we're starting to sketch our final, um, our final graph. All right, so now we're on our final step. Step three is to shift, sketch, and repeat. So if you're using a different color, go ahead and change to your final color. I'm going to use green here. And we're going to apply both our shifts at the same time. From each of our light blue points, or our base pattern points, we're going to move right pi over two and down one. So you see pi over two will be equal to two horizontal grid units, and then down one, that'll just be one vertical grid unit. Okay, so starting with the point at the origin, we're going to move it right pi over two and down one, and that'll be our first final point. So do that to each of your light blue or your base pattern points. You'll move right pi over two, down one. Right pi over two, down one. 
The only really tricky thing here is pi over two is equal to two horizontal grid units. So you just make sure you're doing that. Right pi over two, down one. Right pi over two, down one. So your final graph should have the same shape as your base pattern graph from step two. It should just be horizontally and vertically shifted. So let's sketch in this nice sine curve. All right, and there we have one cycle of our graph. And now we get the fun part. You get to repeat this pattern over and over again. Um, notice that what were zeros are now I'm going to call the midline points. See them right here at y equals negative one. Um, and it just kind of helps to have that as a reference. So you can even highlight that if you want or do something to help yourself see that or maybe just do a double check at the end. And I am switching to purple to show the additional cycles of sine. Okay, so from this midline point, we're going to have a minimum next and then another midline point. And that's really all we have room for on this side. Okay, but we can work backward going left. We'll have a maximum, a midline point, a minimum, a midline point. And just keep repeating this pattern over and over again. It's like you have a stamp, that green stamp is your pattern, and you're just picking it up, moving four units down, and stamping it again. Okay. All right, so we can sketch in these nice additional cycles of sign. All right, and you have quite a few cycles here of our final graph. Notice that any of your information from step one, you should be able to look and now confirm visually uh, that information. So you can see from midline to maximum or midline to minimum, you see that that is a distance of three, so that's good. We said B is equal to two, and so that tells us we should have two cycles between zero and two pi. So we have one full cycle here and another full cycle here. Um, so we should feel pretty confident that this is a great sketch of the equation. Um, and when all else fails, remember that you can substitute in a value for X and make sure that the Y coordinate you get is the one that you have on your graph. All right, so remember, graphing sine curves that have shifts takes some practice. Um, keep watching some examples, keep trying the examples. Um, there are links in the video description for more examples of sine and more examples of some other trig functions as well. Um, so check those out and just keep up the practicing and thanks for watching.